Hey guys, it's me, Sujoy, over here. Uh, welcome back to another video. So on this video, I'm going to be talking about why 2024 will be a big year for India. So uh, uh, for those of you who are new to my channel, uh, the name of my channel is called a Sujoy in Vietnam. I've been living in Vietnam for over five years. Uh, I was an English teacher for three and a half years. And now I run an online digital marketing business and I'm also a full-time YouTuber. Um, so if you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. Uh, so as I'm making this video, I'm right now here in India. I'm, making a, I'm, uh, I'm visiting my father who has come from the States. And you know, so, and today is uh, the 31st of December. So I want to wish you guys in advance, Happy New Year, uh, you know, wishing you uh, a lot of success and, you know, prosperity, wealth, um, you know. So, uh, yeah, so I'm making this uh, special video about <clears throat> why 2024 will be a big year for India. Um, so this is going to be a bit longer video, um, you know, but um, you know, like based on the previous year, um, you know, like how it was for India for 2023, uh, I did some research, some evaluation, and so I'm sharing a couple of my thoughts. Um, you know, I'm not a psychic reader. Uh, I'm not an astrologer. I'm not predicting, but something which I can uh, relate to, which I can touch base, which could be realistically happening. So it's not only about 2024, but 2024 and beyond you know, like uh, why it would be a big year for India. So, uh, yeah, the first thing which I want to touch base would be, um, you know, would be the cleanliness uh, factor. So, uh, so by 2024, um, I think there would be a kind of a national drive over here to really, um, you know, clean up all the cities across India, whether they're metropolitan cities or small cities, and, you know, just finding the perfect solution, um, you know, so there'll, there would be reduction of people spitting on the, on the roads, um, you know, uh, and, you know, I think there would be some kind of, uh, you know, I would, uh, there could be certain kind of fines being implemented. You know, if you're litter, if you're littering, or if you're spitting on the on the on the roads, you know, because it's kind of it's kind of common to see out here in India, like you know, like if you're a tuk tuk driver uh, or an Uber driver driving. You know, like you know, sometimes this I see like this like spit on the roads and all that shit and all the trash and everything. So <clears throat> I think there's going to be a national drive for really cleaning up all the streets across India and, you know, fixing all those potholes and, you know, just widening up the roads, um, you know, making sure there are no, there's, there's very less trash on the roads, uh, on the streets, on the pavements. So I think there's going to be kind of a fine being implemented like you know if you're going to throw trash on the roads on the streets um you know you would be fined uh if you're going to be spitting on the roads um you would be fined uh, and you know there would be an increase of uh you know roads road road cctvs you know like you know uh you know like it, it's, it's very common like you know like when you're when you uh, when you're driving around in india or you know like people driving two wheelers cutting around and, you know, uh, trying to act like uh, super, trying to act like some, uh, you know, like some, you know, I've seen this, like, they just cut around and all that. So I think that's going to stop. There's going to be a reduction in that because, you know, like most of the um, the vehicles and everything, like their number plates and everything, there'll be more traffic regulations, more um, CCTVs, you know, like you know, tracking down on violators uh, who are drive who are driving recklessly. Um, you know, they would be um, they would be fined. You know, they they have to all log on. You know, they, like you know, um, in Dubai, you know, like whenever you are, you know, like they follow the traffic very um, uh, very uh, religiously. You know, I mean, there's no there's, you won't find like people cutting around and all those kind of things. 
Um, you know, like you log on to, you know, if you are, a, if I'm driving a two wheeler or a car, I log on to a portal. And I can see like, have I done any violations? Um, so that could be possible. That could be a solution for people not cutting around, you know, so uh, it's kind of a common sight to see out here in India. So coming back, it would be the cleanliness. <clears throat> so yeah, that'll be kind of a national drive, I expect. Let's talk about the uh, economy, the Indian economy. So um, I think by 2024, we're gonna be seeing a reduction in inflation here. Um, I would also like to see, uh, you know, uh, not include, not implementing GST tax and everything. I mean, like, I mean, I've been, I've been living in Vietnam for so many years now, like whatever, whenever you're going out to a restaurant or a coffee shop, uh, or if you're buying anything, uh, there, you know, there's no tax, you know, you just pay the money what is being listed. Okay. So I think there could, there should be some kind of, uh, it would be nice if GST, the, you know, like the tax and everything, it's, it's not included, you know, just consumers pay what's the price of the amount. Um, you know, that would be really nice to see. So yeah, a reduction in inflation, which I can see housing and everything, the prices will fall down. You know, like buying an iPhone, like if you're buying an iPhone 15 in India, I've done my, I've done some math over here. Like if you're going to buy it from Amazon and everything, it cost you around, I think 75,000 rupees. I think that's like, because in, uh, like in Vietnam, it's, it's, it's not very expensive buying iPhones and especially in the U S it's kind of like you get it with the plan. So I think we could expect, you know, like the prices of iPhone 15s Pro and everything uh, falling. There, there would be a reduction in prices even for all smartphones, um, electronic equipments, um, you know, to make it more attractive and lucrative for, for um, even middle class Indians to start affording these gadgets, you know, because so... And of course, you know, like having a lot of uh, facilities from the banks over here, like if you're an Indian citizen, you have an Indian bank account, you can buy an iPhone on an installment, but you won't be paying a lot of interest rates and everything, you know, it'll be easier for you to own um, electronic, electronic items or, you know, or buy, a, buy a real estate here in India, you know, or buy uh, cars. Um, you know, a lot of facilities and everything. So I think the inflation would go down, the interest rates, there would be a reduction in interest rates. That's what I would like to see. Of course, a rise in uh, employment. So uh, you'll see like the employment level, you know, a lot of Indians, they'll be getting employed. You know, not only about, I'm not talking only about white collar jobs, but um, you know, like even blue collar jobs or you know, picking up services like, you know, like Uber driving or, you know, like a lot of different things, you know, which, uh, which, which is like, uh, what I would also like to see is um, a lot of startups um, being um, a more emphasis on startups, you know, like there are a lot of Indian, you know, the majority of the Indian population over here, they're very young. I mean, um, it's, it's gone are those days, you know, like, oh, I'm going to graduate from college and I'm going to get a job. Not all Indian students will think like this, you know, like maybe they want to start a successful startup company, but they don't have the capital. They don't have the. So this is where actually I think the government will step in, um, you know, from 2024 onwards, providing a lot of um, financial assistance, um, ease of starting up a business in India um you know whatever resources and tools you know that's the reason why how china is you know how how the china success story happened is because there are a lot of startups you know um you know they got a lot of funding and everything um same in vietnam you know like i see a lot of entrepreneurs young entrepreneurs you know um they have a lot of startups and everything because uh, you know they get a lot of facilities from the banks uh they get a lot of uh, ease of taking loans but i think it's going to be a bit easier. So I would like to see more startup companies, um, you know, um, here in India, you know, and of course I want them to go global with innovative ideas and everything. 
Um, I can also, I, I think there would be also a rise in digital nomads here in India. Like, you know, there are a lot of, um, you know, like uh, a lot of uh, students, if they're graduating college, you know, uh, you know, maybe they want to pick up freelance work. So, you know, something like Upwork freelancers, you know, like, you know, so many companies out here in India, you know, and so many companies in the U.S. and overseas, they're looking for uh, outsourcing their work uh, at an affordable rate. Uh, of course, you know, Philippines is on the top of the game because, you know, like, uh, that's the reason why you know, a lot of our outsourcing goes to the Philippines. But I think um, if India can also look into this, um, you know, like a lot of people, um, you know, if you're graduating from the college or, you know, if you're an unemployed over here or, um, you know, you can you can you can become a digital nomad, you know, and, you know, you can start doing a lot of um, freelance work from the comfort of your home. I mean, even if you're a single dad, if you're, if you're even if you're a stay at home dad or a stay at home mom taking care of your family, um, you know, you can you can start becoming a digital nomad. So um, and, uh, so I think this is something which is very interesting and I'd love to see this happen. Let's talk about the education industry. Um, so you all know that I was an English teacher uh, for three and a half years in Vietnam. Um, you know, like I have, a, I have a U.S. degree and I did my uh, teaching certificate from an Australian center. Um, see, the I think that uh, the T I'm talking about teaching industry in a sense that the focus has always been on Southeast Asia. You know, like Vietnam, Thailand, South Korea, Japan. These are the hot markets where, you know, expat teachers, uh, they want to go there and they want to teach English over there. Um, you know, I mean, let me talk about Vietnam because I would be in the best position for that. Um, so, averagely, an expat teacher would be getting around 1200 to 1500 US uh, if they're teaching in public schools. Um, if you're teaching in international schools, I think it would be around uh, 2500 to 3000 US. So uh, I think if there can be more international centers, international language centers here in India, like ILA, VUS, um, you know, Wall Street English, um, you know, because there are many, many Engl English centers in Vietnam, especially in Ho Chi Minh, Hanoi and everything. So I think there should be a shift in the education industry that, you know, most expats, you know, like, uh, you know, they should, they should like, they should start thinking at, okay, yeah, India is a hot market to teach English. You know, uh, I have a teaching certificate, um, you know, hiring uh, non-native and native teachers, uh, not like other Southeast Asian countries where you have this discrimination stuff going around. Only hire native teachers if you're from Australia, US, South Africa and everything. But also hiring non-native teachers if they have the right credentials, teaching certificate, and if they've also taken a TOEIC exam. Um, um, so I think that would be nice to see, you know, increasing the, uh, the salaries for, you know, for expat teachers who want to come out here in India and teach English. So I think the market should focus more on India. Like I want, I want a phase to come where, you know, like expats, you know, from their home country would think like, uh, why go to Vietnam? Why go to Japan? Why go to China to teach English? Why go to South Korea? Uh, India is the number one preference because, you know, you, the pay is good. Um, you know, uh, standard of living is going to be is better, not very expensive. So um, if that can be focused on, you know, you can, you can then uh, get a lot of expat teachers coming over here in India to teach English. Um, of course, like sites like Teach Abroad, Teach Away and everything, you know. So, uh, yes, yeah, so look into that. Um, I also expect that the passport ranking, the Indian passport ranking to go up. Uh, uh, you know, more, I think, I think there'll be a point where I think majority of the Southeast Asian countries like Singapore, Malaysia, Malaysia has already started. Um, even Thailand, uh, I think Vietnam will do that very soon that uh, a lot of Indians, uh, we would be able to go to these regions uh, without any visas, without any visa on arrival, get a 30 day visa or whatever, and also uh, more access to European countries, uh, visa free. 
Um, you know, and um, so uh, I don't know about the U.S., but, um, you know, like, I think there should be also like a visa on arrival facility for uh, for Indians who want to visit Australia, New Zealand, um, you know, because uh, India is a strategic partner, um, you know. So I think I would love to see that. So, of course, the passport ranking would go up definitely more. Uh, let's talk about the infrastructure. Um, yes, like I said in a couple of my previous videos, I don't find the infrastructure over here in India to be very good. But I think uh, it's going to be a game changer for 2024 and beyond, um, you know, as there will be more flyovers, uh, you know, more more emphasis uh, in the cities, you know, not, not the outskirts of the cities, inside the cities, you know, like the major metropolitan cities, the small cities, focusing on the cleanliness of the roads. Like uh, what I see in Vietnam is that, of course, you know, like you have a lot of two wheelers over there in Vietnam, but it's like a, um, it's like a controlled uh, chaos over there. But like what I like over there is that you have separate roads for, uh, for cars, for four wheelers, and you have a separate section uh, for two wheelers. So I think if that can be implemented, definitely that would be nice. And of course, the metro system, um, you know, like have more metro uh, metros in all the, in all other cities in India, like smaller cities in India, you know, like monorails, um, metro, um, you know, all these uh, other transportational facilities, which will help in the reduction in uh, traffic congestions. More flyovers, like in Bangkok, you see a lot of flyovers, like you got a road over here, you got a road over here. You know, like in, um, so you, you know, like have more layers of flyovers. So, and of course have a lot of skyscrapers. Um, yeah, so I think that would be really good to see. So infrastructure. Um, let's talk about the unity. Um, of course, you know, we are all Indians and we are all proud to be Indians. But um, what I saw in Vietnam is that how Vietnam was able to tackle COVID. It's a bit loud outside, yeah. Why Vietnam was able to tack it, tackle COVID-19 really well is because they all listen to the government. I mean, they religiously listen to the government. There is a lot of unity if they say that you got to wear a mask, everybody wears up, everybody masks up, you know. So I think there will be more unity, um, more Indians coming closer together than ever before. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if you're an NRI or living in India. So I think there's going to be more unity as long as you you are an Indian origin or, you know, you're an Indian, um, there'll be more unity. Um, so I think I would like to see that because that's, that what, that's what actually drives the country more stronger, the unity. Okay. So I think I would like to see that. And of course, well mannerism, um, you know, like instead of, you know, like a couple of, you know, the people acting like thugs or, you know, like talking rudely and everything. I think uh, well mannerism would become an important integral part for um, the Indian society, you know, like whether it is customer service, um, you know, so I think this should be a focus, you know, like how to be more well mannered, um, less crimes, uh, you know, so the well mannerism, I think that would be really nice to see uh, more unity. So, yeah, I talked about customer service. Uh, you know, there should be more emphasis on co customer service. I think, you know, it would be nice that if the government can try to put more emphasis on customer service, you know, providing good customer service to to uh, the end users, um, because the customer service in India is not the best. Um, you know, um, and especially, you know, I've been to a couple of international brands over here. You know, I mean, I didn't find the customer service to be really nice, but I think they should ramp up the customer service. Um, um, there should be more focus on good providing good customer service, you know, so that the consumers, um, you know, they feel better. Their experience, the shopping experience or going to a coffee shop or a restaurant or whatever it is. Um, you know, the customer service, I think, needs to be emphasized. Um, the next one, I think, would be um, the digitalization and green economy. So see, what's happening right now in Vietnam is that um, 
there is a huge drive for digitalization uh, and for a green economy. So I think India should focus heavily on this. Um, try to make everything more digitalized, uh, even if there are certain government um, legalities, which uh, average Indians have to do, like instead of doing all the paperwork and all that, get it more digitalized. Um, yeah, uh, so yeah, I mean, more digitalization, even in terms of banking sector, um, you know, various different industries. So I think digitalization is, uh, is the way to move forward. And of course, having a green, sustainable economy, which is the highest priority, which I think um, is uh, should be focused in India, the green economy. So I also talked about this in uh, one of my previous videos for uh, for Vietnam would be the cashless economy. So I think India should focus the same model, the cashless economy, like more Indians would start using, uh, would reduce in using more physical cash. Uh, you know, like everything would become more cashless, you know, like, um, you know, like you do have, you know, like paying through Paytm and all those kind of things. But I think there should be more startups um, implementing more cashless, uh, like, you know, it'll be more cashless. Um, so, yeah, I would like to see a more cashless economy uh, over here. Like, you know, everything is more digitalized. People are not taking on money from the ATM all the time, you know, or whatever it is, but everything becoming a bit more cashless. So, yeah, the cashless economy would be nice. Um, then, of course, uh, uh, reduction in the air pollution, you know, like uh, if you look at New Delhi uh, in India, uh, the air quality is severely very bad. Um, even where I'm staying over here, um, you know, in India, the air quality is not the best. So I always have to wear masks. I'm very happy to see that, you know, like there are many, there are, there are, there are Indians, there are, I do find couple, many Indians, they do wear masks. You know, some they don't. Uh, that's their choice. But um, yeah, I mean, because, you know, it's not because of the COVID, it's because of the air quality, you know, like especially, you know, somebody who's having a sensitive chest, or, you know, like, uh, for me, it's very important to have clean air. So, yeah, I think there should be reduction in air quality, in air pollution, or maybe installing certain devices across the cities where absorbing the, um, the CO2 emissions and everything. So I think there should be some, um, some technology implemented for this, for, for, redu for reduction in air pollution. Um, traffic rules I've covered, you know, people cutting out, you know, people cutting in this, that. So I think that should be focused on. Um, let's talk about the outsourcing. Uh, I think from 2024 and above and beyond, I think we can expect India to be one of the biggest outsourcing hubs. Um, you know, like we always talk about, you know, Vietnam, you know, China is the labor cost is going up very much. You know, a lot of companies and manufacturing companies a lot of Chinese business people, they are actually relocating to Vietnam to set up their factories and everything. Um, so I think, I think you know, we should learn from this. I think we should definitely focus more on, um, um, you know, in terms of agriculture, in terms of garment, textiles and everything, you know, like follow the Vietnam model. Um, you know, so I think we, we have the potential to be a outsourcing hub um, you know, I would love to see, um, you know, Vietnam outsourcing its stuff uh, from India. So I think, you know, we should focus more on uh, outsourcing. So, um, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a um, economist, but, uh, you know, I think this, there's a huge potential for India for this. Um, the next would be like um, in implementing state of state of the art um, agricultural technologies and you know, do hydro farming facilities. Um, I think that that would be very interesting to watch. So, you know, like we can be an agricultural hub for the world, you know, like agriculture is something which we, we really need to focus on uh, from 2024 and beyond because, you know, like say, for example, if there's a war happening somewhere else and, you know, we should be less dependent on agriculture from other countries. So we should have our own um, farm, we should be able to grow all these uh, agricultural produces, you know, like using state-of-the-art technology, hydro farming, 
So basically being less dependent on the world, you know, being more uh, self-reliant, Atmanirbhar, um, you know, so because if you're more self-reliant, I think that's the way to move forward, you know. So yeah, then of course, ease of doing business, um, you know, like I said, you know, a lot of international investors, you know, they want to outsource their businesses to other countries. So I think uh, this should be taken into consideration that, you know, um, you know, they should be able to invest very easily here in India and of course provide them like a, like how in Vietnam they provide a five-year uh, business visa or a 10-year visa, invest five-year investor visa or a 10-year investor visa or whatever at a very nominal, nominal cost. Um, so I think that should be looked into, you know, providing investor visas with ease, ease of doing business in India, you know, not having to deal with, uh, you know, foreign currency exchange complications and everything like so uh, I think that should be focused even more, uh, ease of doing business. Um, now, if I'm talking about the elections, I'm not a political person, but definitely I have high regards for, um, you know, for Mr. Modi, who is the prime minister of India. I think he's moving the country forward and um, I wouldn't be surprised that he wins uh, the the upcoming election term, which is very, very crucial for India's success uh, in the world map. So I think that's going to happen. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, I'm not, a, I'm not a political person, but I think um, that's, that's how it's going to be. Um, space race, um, you know, I, I see India is actively, you know, like sending, um, you know, um, satellites to the moon and, you know, a lot of different things. So I think, uh, you know, the space race thing is going to be ramping up. You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised that, you know, we're going to be having installation in Mars or uh, sending a couple of our Indian astro astronauts to Mars, uh, you know, or having, a, uh, having an Indian space station, having an Indian space station uh, like the ISS, um, you know, for different space activities. Um, uh, yeah, and then of course, uh, private investments. So there would be more, uh, more increase in private investments, um, you know, cause like more privatization should, should take place. So, uh, yes, I think that I covered also, um, cause like if I, if I, if I talk about, you know, the technological advances in ASEAN countries, so I'm going to be talking like, especially like if I, whenever I go to Bangkok or, you know, it's more into a lot of different technological advances, touch screens and everything. And, um, you know, so I think, I think we should, we should incorporate that, you know, like we should be more technologically advanced compared to other ASEAN countries. Um, um, so I think that we should focus on, and that's where actually more startups should come into place, making it more digitalized. Um, so I think that would be, I would like to see that. Uh, what did I skip out? Um, yeah, so, uh, one of the things I want to talk about is the biometric banking, uh, because, um, like uh, I, I come from marketing background, especially uh, I was in Southeast Asia, I was into biometric industry. So um, we had this into, um, I would like to see, you know, like using biometric technologies like finger scan or eye retina scan or whatever to, you know, maybe using ATMs, normal ATMs over here or voice recognition or biometrics or whatever to take out cash from the ATM or do banking transactions or, you know, logging into your uh, banking account using, uh, you know, if you're using Android, iOS or whatever with your eye scan, eye retina scan or with your uh, fingerprint. So I think more emphasis should be taking place for biometrics, um, AI. I think AI would be regulated for sure, but, um, you know, I think um, biometrics uh, is something we should be focused more on. Um, and finally, um, you know, I know this sounds a bit crazy because I'm trying to make this video 
concise um, would be um, chip implantation. Um, I think, uh, like, you know, right now, you know, ma majority of the, I mean, most of the Indians, they use, like, the ID cards and everything. But don't get me wrong. I mean, it sounds like from Back to the Future or it sounds like Tomorrowland, but I think chip implantation technology is quite real. And I think that would be given emphasis from 2024 onwards. Like, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, within the next two years, you know, if most of the Indians, they do have some kind of a little micro chip implant where, you know, everything is synced, the data, uh, the profile, everything. Uh, you know, you can access banking, you can shop, you can do e-commerce, like a full database store. So um, I think chip implant would be the next way, is, is the way moving forward to... Uh, to for the humankind technology, uh, humankind progress. So yeah, so the chip implantation is quite uh, is quite uh, uh, realistic. Uh, it's not like I'm not I'm not talking like a Hollywood movie or something. But I think this is something which I would like India to focus on, like you know, like uh, microchip implantation, uh, maybe um, you know on the on the wrist or something, you know. Um, so I think that would be good to watch. So yeah, I think I just covered everything uh, from my end. Uh, you know, if you have more ideas, just feel free to comment down in the section below. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm not just uh, I, like I said, I'm not I'm not a psychic reader. I'm not a astrologer, or I'm not a you know I'm not. But this is what I would like to see. Yeah, this is what I would like to see. And um, yeah, so I hope you guys uh, like, I, ho I hope you guys like watching this video. Um, and I, I wish you guys uh, a happy new year, a happy 2024. Um, and I really hope the war in Ukraine will come to a halt, um, you know, um, by 2024, uh, beginning of the year. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, if you, if you want to make uh, passive income online, if you want to start a successful online business, I'm going to keep a link down in the description below. Uh, you can check out my income stream site. Um, so with that being said, you guys have a great new year. Um, so this was me, Sue Joy. Peace out.